Anakin's gone. I am what remains. We're looking at sea otters. Six of them here. And they, they were in front of us and they were just following them now, slowly. They're beautiful. They go down to the bottom, they get a stone, and they go down to the bottom, they get a seashell, and then um, like a clam or something like that, and they come back up and they and they roll on the backs and then they smash the shell with the stone like that, bah, 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 and then eat the eat the uh, mussel or whatever is inside. Go down for another one with a stone. It's cool, isn't it? What's going on, guys? So today we're gonna be taking this Kenobi. Uh, new Black Series Darth Vader and putting a new head sculpt on it, the battle damage version. This one I have is uh, the New Hope version, but it's pretty much the same. I just don't have two of the Kenobi ones to compare. But uh, when I saw the show, I knew I wanted an action figure of the battle damaged version of Darth Vader. I saw his head sculpt on Etsy and decided that... Uh, I needed to try my hand at this one. I thought it'd be a simple paint, but it came out to be more difficult than anticipated. I started trying to sand it just with uh, some 320 grit sandpaper and it was not working, so I whipped out the Dremel. If you're uh, Dremeling, make sure you're wearing a mask and uh, some safety goggles. You don't really want all that dust in your eye and in your mouth. So I turned the Dremel down all the way and uh, tried to dremel it down on the sides. The helmet wasn't setting flush to the shoulder pads. And I, I thought I got it here, but later on in the video when I start working on it, I noticed it's still not setting uh, completely flush. So I, this took a little bit of sanding and sculpting, but I'll show that later on in the video. But right now I'm just trying to get the neck to fit the shape of the uh, shoulder pads. And it turned out looking okay there. So this is uh, the more permanent way to make a neck peg. Usually you can just shove some blue tack up into the head. But this way it kind of makes an actual fit. So you can squeeze it on and it's not going to pop off. You don't have to put Vaseline on the neck peg and on the shoulders. But I usually do just so the hot glue doesn't stick there. I put some aluminum foil inside the head and then filled it up with hot glue. And then uh, after I fill up the hot glue, I just kind of squeeze it on to the, the head to where I like it and uh, let that dry. So here I am squeezing it on there. Uh, the glue's gonna run down a little bit. You just have to trim it up, but I'm gonna let that set for a little bit to dry or to cool. Okay, so here's what it looks like afterwards. And I mean, it pops on there pretty easily. Um, you do have to trim around that excess, but I mean at this point I thought it looks pretty good. So here I am trimming the excess glue around the neck. If you get it on there perfect, I mean you don't really have to trim, but I put a little bit too much glue in there. But as you can see, it's it's staying on there. It's not going to pop off on its own. Here's what it looked like after that process. First I primed it all white, but... I was thinking of just painting it pink, or like a, a purplish pink. I tested it on this uh, extra Spider-Man head I had. And I was going to uh, dry brush white, or like a fleshy white over that. To try to get that burnt look. Here's the light flesh I used. And I mixed in uh, a little bit of the scarlet. And then a little bit of blue, just barely any blue. And then some of this regular red. The scarlet and the regular red is usually my go-to blood look, so I thought that would work out here. So I just load up the airbrush with that paint, and here I, I thinned it down a little bit too much. It wasn't really coming out, so I had to try to dry that real quick, and then come back with, uh, I put it a little bit thicker and came back and tried it again. But you can see I, I just sprayed the inside pink, uh, made sure I got even coverage everywhere. I didn't want it to not be painted in those corners but yeah that's where I'm at right now with it uh, so with the dry brushing uh, it took me a while to get a good mixture of the white with the flesh tone I end up just using mostly white the flesh tone I even think made that much of a difference but uh, here's what I started with this was way too 
flesh tone. He looked, he's supposed to look like he hasn't seen the sun in a very long time. So it's mostly white, but here's me mixing it up. And I have a reference photo on my computer that I just try to match it to. Also, sorry for the blurriness. It was late at night when I was filming this. I didn't realize how foggy it looked. But I'm just putting a little bit on this brush and going in and uh, trying to lightly brush it on the raised parts. I want to leave the divots and everything pink. So like his scars and around uh, his eye more pink right now. This is my first attempt at it and I came in a little thick with the white so later on in the video you'll see I had to uh, add some more pink back in. But here's where I'm at right now. So uh, I just keep messing with this a little bit, adding white, adding a little bit of pink and I explain it more in this next part of the video but when I recorded this next part of the video I was kind of sick so if there's a noticeable audio difference if I sound worse than usual, uh, just know I was not feeling great, but I didn't want to have to re-record the whole part. For painting the details, I use these jeweler's glasses. Uh, if you don't have any, these are really good to get to paint eyes and stuff like that. And they're only like $20. And then I have this, my smallest paintbrush. So this next part of the video, uh, it looks like I did a lot, and I'll try to break it down as best as possible, but it was just these small details that I got with the paintbrush. The last time I just dry brushed that white on there, and uh, with all the red parts, like there, um, I kind of mixed this red paint with uh, a little bit of this scarlet. Uh, and then just a tad bit of black, just a barely any black. And that really, I feel like gives it a good blood look. It's Cause the scratches on his face from the pictures are, they look like they're open still. So um, I took that same red and painted it around the eyes in the uh, Hot Toys picture. He has like red on his eyelids. And then uh, I watered that down a lot and use that same like a ton like there is mostly water at that point and then use that to kind of paint the top of the head up there and then uh kind of just touch up around the nose and stuff where i thought it needed more red and then uh i painted the eye white i just wanted to get an outline of the eye so when i work around it i'll know what not to paint uh, it's going to be more of like a yellowish white. And then uh, the black, I watered down that black a ton, where it's mostly water, the same as the red, and just kind of brushed underneath his top. Here, let me take this off. Under, up in there, brushed black around the nose, where there'd be a shadow, kind of create an artificial shadow. Uh, and then the lips down there, those lips were not fun, but the lips, I just took the skin tone, added a little bit of red until I got like a color that, not exactly pink, but more pink than the skin tone. It's good to keep, like I use this thin brush to kind of brush around there. I keep an extra brush that's uh, bigger. I keep this dry. And so whenever I put on that thin coat of and it's like watery, I'll kind of take this and just kind of dab it off with it. If you just keep the water down paint on there, it's gonna make the lines and then that paint's gonna be like gunked up and stuff. It's not gonna look very good. So you really wanna just keep it light on there. But I'm gonna try to paint those eyes. Same as before, I'm gonna have to do real slow with a thin brush. I'm probably gonna do that off camera. But my plan here is to just take the white uh, and then add a little bit of yellow, maybe a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, just barely any. I don't want it to look like yellow eyes or anything, but if you look at the picture, uh, he definitely does not have bright white eyes like this. The dry brushing, uh, worked out not perfect, but, uh, I was able to fix it with some light coats of flesh tone 
It's just taking, uh, take that red, brush it on there with a lot of water mixed in. See how it looks. If you don't like it, take the, the flesh tone, water it down, brush it on top, and you just keep doing that until you get what you, what you want in some places. The black, I don't know if I love it. It's kind of standing out. I might do a little bit more flesh tone over it. Also put a uh, flat coat over him. That just seals in all the paint. So whenever I'm working on the eyes, if I mess up, I don't have to worry about it ruining anywhere else. It's all sealed in. I let it set. I let the paint set overnight. I've let that uh, flat coat set for probably like five hours at this point, five or six hours. So we should be good to go. Okay, up next is my most hated slash love part. Uh, I'm adding these eyes. So I cannot paint eyes for the life of me. So I bought these uh, water slides and they're pretty good. They're way easier than painting the eyes, but they're still pretty difficult. So I just soak it in water for a few seconds and then um, put it on my finger and you gotta slide the sticker off. If you've never used a water slide, this might not be the best way to start using them, but it's definitely easier than uh, using actual paint to paint the eyes. I mean, unless you got a really steady hand. But you just slide the sticker off of the backing then you want to try to just get it on the face any way you can. <laughs> Once you get on the face, you can move it around with the tweezers and the uh, X-Acto knife. But getting on the face is the hardest part, at least of this project. I think this is extra hard because there's there's chunks of his helmet sticking in the way. And all these sharp, sharp bits. I actually didn't get on film uh, me finishing putting the eye on. I got a phone call while I was recording. So this is what it looks like once you get it on there. What you really want to do after you get it on there is take one of these Q-tips and just kind of like jab it in there. Uh, you want to get all the water out from underneath the sticker because if there's water left underneath there, it's going to peel off. And that actually happened with this one. This one ended up peeling off later and so I had to redo it, which was a real pain. But make sure you get all the water out from underneath and uh, it should dry and you can clear coat it. Also, fair warning, I was sick uh, day two of filming this next part, so please forgive me. I kind of reworked the head. Um, the sticker I put on the eye uh, peeled off, of course, so I had to redo it. Uh, I don't think I got the actual video of the, me putting the eye on, but this one went on better probably should have did more to the left but what I noticed after I put on the second eye or the eye the second time is that the I can show pictures but the paint around the eye was starting to really gunk up and I was not liking how it was looking so what I did was I put some rubbing alcohol in a little jar like this and just took a little bit and kind of used it to thin down that paint and kind of smooth it a little bit more evenly. I'll show pictures uh, after I scraped away some of the paint that was like too far gone to really uh, really fix and I fixed it. But I think the, la the last thing I want to do before I paint this head black, I also redid the inside. The glue and everything would be fine, but this head is not flush, as you can see, and it's really bugging me. <laughs> Even with the cape, the front has some more gap, and I never even sanded the front. So the two, op well, I was just gonna keep sanding until it's flush, but this helmet is hitting the shoulder pad. You can see where I sanded it down a little bit. Still wasn't sitting flush. So what I'm thinking is to use some of this epoxy sculpt. Put a little ring around, kind of get it set on there where I want it to sit and uh, let that dry a little bit, trim it up and then sand that down. I'm not sure yet if I want to go through all that effort, but I mean, the gap is really bugging me. 
cannot get this head on any further. So I did the neck fix. Uh, he has a little dog collar here. I just kind of uh, mix, you mix the two parts of clay together 50-50. And I made a little ring and placed it on the bottom and just squished it down. And after about 30 minutes, I used uh, the X-Acto knife to trim that up. And then when it dried after 24 hours, I sanded it down so that the neck would just continue down. It almost continues down like into the shoulder pads, which I'm okay with. So here's it primed white. I used Silly Putty to kind of clog up the face hole so I wouldn't spray any paint in there. And the Silly Putty really works out good. Look at that transition. Uh, here it is. I just painted it black and uh, used some silver, uh, silver leaf rub and buff. That's what it's called. I used that on the nose and then the bolts. Just take your time on the inside. I kind of made a mixture of just a little bit of white with black to make it a little bit gray. I didn't know how far to go with that, so I just brushed it on there, and it's not really noticeable, but there's my flat coat. Here's my gloss coat. I'm going to spray over the whole helmet. Okay, so this next part's pretty self-explanatory. He has two gashes on his uh, control box from where he got hit. And so I just kind of marked them out with a marker. It wasn't really noticeable, so I just kept a picture handy and tried to eyeball where they go. Uh, then to dirty it up, I put some brown paint on a piece of paper. Uh, it was this, I just grabbed the first brown I saw in the drawer, so this chocolate brown. I mixed in a ton of water with that and just kind of brushed it on. Here you can see I'm just, just brushing everywhere on it. I'm going to end up cleaning this off, so... I take a paper towel and just kind of try to clean as much off as possible because there's always going to be those gaps and stuff you can't really get into with the paper towel to clean. So it's going to leave it behind as like a uh, like a simple wash, really. I mean, it's just going to be dirty. Here's that silver leaf rub and buff that I was talking about earlier. Uh, I'm just going to dry brush some of this on. I just kind of eyeball it here. All the places I think that would show metal after getting scratched up, I kind of dry brush this on just barely any on the paintbrush and I go around and do that especially like down in the corners uh, so I use this black wash on the gash you just dump out paint on there it's like it's like pre watered down black almost I never use it and so I just kind of wanted to try it out here okay so for the last part of this custom we're gonna try to make those lenses actually look like lenses. I bought this UV resin off Amazon for like $10. And you just pour it into something and you can paint it on with the brush and you use this UV light to cure it. So here's the UV light I got. I've had it for a while with my resin prints. I use it sometimes when smoothing out. But I'm just going to put a little bit of this UV resin in a silicone container. This is like a jewelry making kit, so it came with all these silicone molds already. So I'm just using it to put the resin in. So I started by painting it on the eye. I think I put too much on the eye though. It's not really noticeable in person unless you kind of look at it in the right light. But I got a little too close to the eyelid with it. I shined this UV light on it for like a minute or two. And then I put it in my cure station for my print, my resin printer. But if you don't have that, you can just use the sunlight. So here's what it looks like on the eye. I mean, it makes it super glossy. And it's going to keep that water slide down forever. <laughs> the thing's never coming up. So I'm going to do the lens next. I didn't film the whole lens because it was kind of tricky. But I just brushed it on there, used the light for two minutes, and then I put it in my cure station. But like I said, you can use sunlight too if you wanted it do the same thing just leave it out there for like a few hours and it'll cure it but yeah I think it turned out looking pretty good there's the whole helmet glossy uh, I, and here's a few glamour shots the UV resin really made the eye pop I don't think you necessarily have to have it but I think it really helped out with the lens because it looks like there's an actual lens in this helmet now versus before it just looked like it was painted yeah, I think you could skip the UV resin in the neck if you really wanted to, but I think it added to the overall quality of how it looks. So uh, if you have any questions or any comments, uh, let me know down below. 
and if you want to see more content like this i have more stuff i'm working on so make sure you subscribe and uh thanks for watching i really appreciate it uh this took a long time and i appreciate all the feedback you give thanks